are doing yoga on the roof deck and it is the perfect way to start this morning. It's hot. It's very hot. Good morning, today we are doing a little bit of yoga on the roof deck. We are here in Oaxaca, Mexico. Yesterday I had a ton of anxiety and so did Tori because we woke up at 3 a.m. for our flight to Oaxaca and I got no sleep, like zero hours of sleep and Tori probably got one hour of sleep. We landed here at seven, got to the hostel and our check-in wasn't until three. So we had nothing to do and we really wanted to rest but we had nowhere really to rest. But Tori and I, spent a lot of alone time yesterday. I read my book and like just spent a lot of time on this roof deck alone, which was really nice. I think alone time is really important. And today we woke up to do some yoga and get our day started and be a little more proactive. And I feel all of that anxiety dissipate this morning and I just feel really well rested and good, ready to start the day. It's really hot and I'm sweaty, but we're gonna finish up this yoga session and then I think most likely change because I'm already sweating and then go and explore the town. I'm holding my spoon in such a weird way. That's really good. The day with you. Nothing more that I would choose. Nothing more that I could choose. <laughs> and a little afternoon sitting with you. See the moon with you. We are sitting right outside of this market and I'm gonna show you what we got because we got a few things. To start off, we got two pairs of pants. I got one and it's like this yellow color and it's made from the agave plant, she said. It's all natural, made from the agave plant. And so I got this yellow one and then Tori got this red one. And each one was 250 pesos, which is what, like $10? And then I got two pouches, which together came out to like 70 pesos, I think. But they're this lavender color. I'm gonna give one to my friend Maddie and one for myself to put pens in. I just thought it was like a really pretty color and pattern. The next thing I got is this little beach bag. They have these woven bags all over the market and I just really liked the color of this one. I also just really need a bag to keep everything for like the airports and we're about to go to the ocean like in a few days so I thought this would be nice. This was $10. And inside of it we have a bunch of veggies. I got bell peppers, broccoli, everything to cook and we also got fruit. So we got papaya, bananas, and mangoes and that's everything we got at the market. It was a really nice market. on the phone, it's as it's always been. Say you want to see me on my birthday and I'm teary again You want to take a road trip in an electric van When you're not studying, will I be far away then? Oh, it sounds like fun, oh, it sounds like fun Pity you can't even Oh, you have so much, Jeremy. Oh my god, really? The corn! <laughs> it was like what if watched it back. Wait, tell me where mine is. Right there, in the cracks. That crack. Ow! Is mine good? Is there a lot? Still? 
This is our fourth day in Oaxaca. Yesterday we did this tour. It was, I think, about 10 US dollars each person. 12. 12 US dollars to be exact. And we went to three different places. The first place we went to is the widest tree in the world called Arbol de Tul. I really enjoyed it, but there was a gate around it. We are at the biggest tree in the world called Arbol de Tule. And it's gated off and we didn't, it's only one dollar to get in, but we we're just lazy to wait in the line. So we're on the outside of the gate. It's pretty cool. Yes, we couldn't go up and hug it or climb it, which makes sense because I feel like if they opened that up to the public, then they would get ruined and that's just not good. Mm -hmm. But for us personally, it was just a little bit sad to see it gated, like a little zoo animal, but. <laughs> and people were all like taking pictures with it and we were taking pictures of it too, so I get it. But it's definitely like a tourist no, it's attraction. it's beautiful. Like it's the stunning. tree is beautiful mm -hmm. and it's huge and you can't even wrap your head around how big it is. I guess part of me just wished, and we both talked about this, like how magical would it be to be walking in a forest and then come and across this. this tree? Oh yeah. Like that would just be such a more magical experience. I actually I wonder what it would look like when it when they originally found it and figured oh out gosh, it was the right yeah. widest tree. Like was yeah. it in a big forest or was mm -hmm. it, it had to have been I guess. Yeah. yeah. But they say that 33 people can surround the tree and hold hands and that's the width of it. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. And then the next thing we did after going to the widest tree in the world is we went on a mezcal tour. So in Guadalajara, if you remember, we, get, we did a tequila tour. It was called Tequila Town. But yesterday we did a mezcal tour. So they took us through the process and showed us what the plant looks like. There's many different plants that produce different types of mezcal. This is the only plant we can cultivate. We have to wait for that plant about eight to 10 years because this plant has a lot of sugar. So when the plant has a lot of sugar that the plant doesn't need, the plant creates a flower. The sugar will up through the flower and the, fly and the plant dies. So, when, that, when the flower appears, we cut the flower, we cut the leaves, and we get the pineapple. This is the only thing we're going to use for making the mezcal. And then they showed us the machine and how it looks like when it's all ground up. And after that, they showed this like copper type machinery that they use to do something or other that I'm kind of forgetting now. Grind it up and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. But <laughs> truthfully, like the process seems very similar to how they made make tequila. Even the piñas of the plant themselves yeah. look very similar. Mm -hmm. And then we took shots, and we ended up taking like 15 shots. They, they were, were small. Baby. They were small, and I didn't even get drunk. I got a little bit like, but yeah. not drunk. Mm -hmm. We're at a mezcal tour. We're learning about how it's made and we're taking shots of mezcal. We just had four shots and we are not drinking the ones that were made with worm. Honestly, I think it tastes pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. This is Danejo. Danejo was in the barrel for one year. Smoky, smooth. It's not too strong, it's not too soft. It's a medium level. My favorite was the coffee. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah, they gave us a the coffee, coffee really that's mixed with mezcal. Oh, it tasted so good. Yeah. It just tasted like coffee. Yeah. But it was amazing. It really just tastes like coffee. And then the third thing we did after we did the mezcal tour is we went to this uh, little house, really in the middle of nowhere, outside of Oaxaca. Like the mountains and the sunset was really beautiful there. And they showed us the process of making textiles and rugs. And that was really, That's really so cool. cool. They showed us how they dye the fabric and like with the red fabric, they place an emphasis on that color and how that's a very Mexican color. It's also the most expensive color. Mm -hmm. And the way they produce the color red is there's a parasite on the cacti that when you press, it like excretes this red, there's but it's not red blood. Juice that comes from it. Mm -hmm. It's not blood, yeah, it's just the color that's inside mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, it was really cool. And then they put lime on top of it and it made a different shade. And then they put this white thing into it and mixed it and then it turned green. And yeah. the whole process of watching how they make colors is so interesting because I've so never cool. seen that done before. And I've never thought of I've it. I've never, yeah, you see color everywhere and you mm -hmm. never think, where did that come from? Yeah. 
it's in everybody's clothes. We look around and everyone's wearing yeah. bright colors and little do you know, it comes yeah. from people who create it with like these magic potions. We came to see the red, which is the most important one of all. The red from a cactus is one of the most beautiful colors of Brisbane in Mexico, by the way. And I do think it like helped me in a lot of ways not take things for granted to learn yeah. the process, whether that's learning the process of mezcal or learning the process of how colors are made for yeah. fabric. Like, it just gives you more insight of how much love and work is put into something that you buy and don't think that much about when you're buying it in a shop. And in the hostels there are like these shared kitchens. We didn't realize that there was a bathroom right <laughs> by the shared kitchen. So we walked into the kitchen and we brought all of our food and we were going to cook. There was like a cutting board that wasn't cleaned and I took it and I was like, oh, will you, what did I say? I said, will, will you help me with this? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I feel like we shouldn't have to do other people's dishes. But I meant it in like a, joking kind of way yeah it was like not super serious. serious like i just wasn't being serious because it was just a cutting board like i don't care we see these two bottles of vodka and we had just drank a couple cocktails and we were just talking about how it's so expensive and we wish we had like liquor to drink and, we're, and i just go oh there's vodka here we could take a couple shots and it's not our vodka and we obviously wouldn't do that like, <laughs> we would never take someone's drinks but then <laughs> this dude comes out of the bathroom like at some point within our conversation, he's like, oh, sorry about the cutting board, by the way. He's I like, know. I heard you guys talking about the dirty dishes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And we're like, no, no, no. We we're like, like oh, we, we didn't. didn't mean it like that. And he was also like from a different country. So he didn't. I think there's like a language barrier in the, in the sense of like understanding when something's a joke or not. So he yeah, didn't understand yeah. that we kind of were joking and not being serious about mm -hmm. the things we were saying. But we, we were like, no, like, please don't be sorry. He's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, and then we were cutting the veggies and he's like, oh, and those are my veggies, right? And I was like, no, no, we brought these veggies. We bought these. <laughs> In my head, I thought that he literally thought we stole his veggies because we were talking about the vodka. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, no, like, I didn't mean so that. So bad. Yeah. Anyway. So that was, <laughs> that was like a funny thing that happened at the hospital last night. And then today, all we did, we really took it slow. I didn't record a lot of it because we woke up and we were kind of feeling drained and just realizing we wanted to connect with each other without, like, recording everything. So we did a little yoga and stuff like that. But then, oh, I learned how to do a headstand for oh, the yeah. first time. I know, I almost wish we recorded it, like I'm glad we didn't, but Tori was like, oh, I wish I had a recording of that. I was able to do it without any help for like, like 10, 20 seconds or something. Yeah, she was doing really good. And then she was helping me with my handstands and that was really fun. And we were just talking about how we want to do that every morning now and like really practice that. I don't know if that will happen, but. <laughs> Tomorrow is our last day. I'm gonna wrap up the Oaxaca vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like because it really supports my channel and subscribe because I post videos every three days on Wednesdays and Sundays. Bye. <laughs>